Robotic surgery is transforming the field of orthopedic surgery. And coming up, we'll discuss traditional robotics and surgery, as well as new navigational assisted robotics, which is used in joint replacement surgeries. These devices help the surgeons to perform more personalized operations with better patient outcomes. Medicine and surgery really have come a long way. They sure have, Andrea. And on Health Talk, we'll explore this new robotic frontier. We're coming up next. Hello, I'm Dr. Eric Maser. And I'm Dr. Andrea Peterson. Today we're discussing the use of robotic technology in joint replacement surgery. We welcome our guests, Dr. Nicholas Polifrani and Dr. Mark Fletcher. Dr. Polifrani and Dr. Fletcher are Norwell Hospital orthopedic surgeons. Nick helped found the joint center there, which is doing such fun, wonderful things. Great to have you guys. Welcome Thank you. back to Thank the you. show. Nice to be here. So tell us about robotic surgery. Uh, People think well, of yeah. robots standing there doing the surgery and the surgeons in the back room having a cup of coffee, right? Yeah, yeah we're still in the room. <laughs> and actually the, the, the robot that we're using is really just a, is a computerized tool. It's, a, it's called a robotic assisted arm. It really just So helps. this is different than the Da Vinci robot that so many people yes, uh, yes. talk about. Yes, so much different, yes. The Da Vinci robot is uh, isolated. The surgeon stands in a, a remote center and the robot really is only uh, cutting instruments. It has nothing to do with uh, uh, positioning or implanting anything. Okay. So Mark, yeah. how is this, the, what you're using different? It's, uh, so we're there working on the patient the whole time. I think Da Vinci, they have a, actually, the surgeon's actually sitting in a booth, and so they, they lose some of that feel, but we're always in the surgery, kind of uh, actually still doing the surgery. We just use it to help us guide the surgery and be more precise with the, the So does the robot sort of hold your hand and guide it? In the no, we hold the robot's hand essentially. It's, it, it'll hold if we're using a, you know, a, a, putting a, the socket in, we're actually putting it in, but it's keeping us in, in a funnel essentially into, in a haptic and allowing us to get down into the joint at a certain angle, at a certain depth. Well, we have some slides I think that you guys mm -hmm. gave us, so we'd like to bring those up and maybe they could help explain all of this. So, so tell us what we're looking at here, guys. Well, this is uh, it's just a slide that I sort of made up. The, the uh, right hand uh, picture shows. Uh, I think it's a it's a, a marriage between the, ro the, the robots and humans. So that's not the robot surgery the, on the yeah. right. Right, <laughs> right. The surgeon on the right is actually holding the arm of the of the computer computer guided arm, uh, which is assisting in in holding it steady and and uh, aiming it in the direction that, that we've chosen preoperatively through, through templating. So does that allow you then to get more accurate angles and, and more accurate cuts because the computer actually has the patient's information fed into it ahead of time, doesn't it? Yes, computer, the computer's uploaded with a, co a computerized tomography scan of the patient, which essentially is a three-dimensional image of the patient's body, which when you're operating on someone you really don't see because you're working through a little portal, their wound. So this gives the computer is telling us over our shoulder that this is exactly where the patient's anatomy is, and it just makes it for uh, precise control. Yeah. What are some of the advantages to the patient of having such precise control? Well, it, to get a when you have a joint replacement, you want one. You want one that lasts a long time, and one of the one of the ways they can fail is if they're not put in correctly. And so, even though we have lots of guides and lots of check marks and all this and all these things to put them in reliably. Uh, computers, what they do is they allow us to, to, to really focus down and have a, a very, very precise and repetitive way to put these in people individually. And then we can say, okay, this is exactly where this joint replacement needs to be for this person, and then we can deliver it every time. Does that joint replacement then feel better for the patient, or is the recovery shorter, or they last longer, or all three? Well, it, it, could be, it can be all three, uh, mainly because the, the reaming is more, the, 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 the procedure where we make the body's anatomy fit the components that we use is more precise. So yeah. the, the accuracy of the range of motion is better, and they, yeah. patients do perceive it. We have the next slide, maybe we could bring that up again to show us. Okay, so. Yeah, explain to us, Mark, what are we looking at here in these two pictures? So on the left side, this is a, the a da, Vin da Vinci robot setup. So the surgeon is sitting on the left in a, on a monitor. He's not in the operating theater, and he's, he's, using, he's working through the computer, and the Da Vinci is in the room operating on the patient. Now, this is not to say anything wrong with no, no, da Vinci No, no, it's not. It's just different. It's just, just a different, different kind of approach. And so on the right, on the, and it's certainly very successful. Mm -hmm. um, on the right side, you can see the orthopedic surgeon is actually in operating on the patient right there and using the computer, uh, not only the, the uh, image on the, on the right showing the knee, but also using the robot arm, robotic arm to make the 
precise cuts. So we're controlling the operation. We're in there. Yeah. We actually can feel what's going on. So there's a feedback mechanism. Oh, really? So, so, so you yeah, do it's still it's still very very tactile and very um, kind of. Uh, you know, as much as a surgery that as it always has been. It's just we're just using a computer to help us be more accurate. I think it's fascinating how as robotic technology has, has evolved, you've really realized that it's not one size fits all in terms of what's best for particular types of surgery. Absolutely. And before we even actually go into the surgery, we can take a, the CT scan that's been generated and we can, we can design what implant works the best for the patient. We can look at them and say, okay, this is how we need to bring this and design it per, uh, specifically for each ever, person. Yeah, I was just going to say, are implants ever designed based specifically upon the patient's CT scans? Are there so that the, it's, it truly is a personalized implant? They can be. Uh, sometimes that's done in total knees. There is a system that's actually the, uh, the components are actually cut for the specific patient. The, that technology is wonderful, but it's not really proven to be anything better than uh, another type. The robotic, what it does is it takes a surgery and modifies it for each individual patient. So you're not just taking a component, you're actually taking the, the imp implantation of the uh, components to the specific patient. It's well, giving you control, yeah. accuracy, and precision and the all at once. Yeah, we have some x-rays I think that you brought along as well, but uh, it, it's really, I guess people don't fully understand what, what the accuracy means, but it means you're going to get uh, almost a Andrew doesn't the like right when thing. I use this yeah. term, but a perfect operation. The operation yeah. no. looks just like it should. Well, in, in, in a, our, our you know, 60 years of joint replacement, we want to get within a zone of normal. And maybe that's three degrees one way or the other. And we can very reliably do that with manual ins instruments, but computers allow us to get within a zone of one degree. Yeah. And it really keeps the outliers down. So we can be sort of like an autopilot. So accurate is doing yeah. it once, precise is doing it over and over and over. Or a, but, but the robotic arm can also, you can also modify your procedure while you're in there. Uh, if you need to take a few more millimeters of a cut, you just dial it into the computer program on the screen and the instrument will change a precise millimeter. It's almost impossible to do that by hand. Yeah. And we have an image we'd like to bring up right now of, uh, that you brought up. Hey, what are we looking at here? This is a uh, unicompartmental arthroplasty, so we've replaced the Medial so that's side. a knee. Yeah, <laughs> knee. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, knee. First things first. And so uh, these uh, these uh, these surgeries have been around for a long time, but uh, they're very difficult to do because you're you working on one isolated part of the body, and notoriously, it's very difficult to put one uh, unicompartmental joint replacement in. And if you don't do it accurately, they don't last very long. But computers allow. So what we're saying is, this is not yeah. a total knee. This is a, yeah, this just is one part, part of the yeah. sort of the inside parts of the Those knee. Those really bright areas. Yeah. And so the, the difficult thing when you do a total knee is you're you're kind of taking the whole knee and you're changing it. When you're using doing one compartment, you have to put it back in a way yeah. that the rest of the knee still works well. And so they are very accurate. Or very they they require a lot of. Do you use the robot for this and surgery? I think we're going to start. We we're, we have the ability to start doing more and offering this type of surgery to more people because we can be so accurate and we can get reliably an implant in there in a way and that again, may sort last of less for a long time. More. You're you're taking yeah. out yes. less, but you're able to achieve. Yeah. Yes, the the this robot uh, started doing just macroplasties, these these uni compartment knee replacements, and then it moved on the ability to do total hips, and now we're moving on to total knee replacements as well, using this this technology. Yeah. And, and as a surgeon, um, how, how do you feel about it? I mean, it, it, is it, do you find it more, f I guess it, uh, fun is not the right word, but it, yeah. it, it's, it's changed what you've yeah. done fundamentally. Well, we st we're still surgeons, we still operate. I think orthopedics in general has done a great job of embracing technology as it comes along. So I think it's, I think all of us are, appreciate the ability to do something with more precision. Yeah, absolutely. Wonderful. The, uh, when I took one of our training courses, I, I, I turned around to the, the instructor and I said, this is, this is the future. This Amazing. is the future of surgery. And it's just a blend of technology to help people. So we're all out of time for today. We want to thank both our guests, Dr. Nicholas Palafrani and Dr. Fletcher, for joining us on Health Talk. Please do send us your questions and comments at healthtalk at wchn.org. We really look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for watching. Stay fit.